Hello and welcome to Countdown. Countdown 2018 and actually it's also Countdown to 2019, the big one. Welcome to perhaps the most important state that's going to elections, assembly elections over the next two weeks, Madhya Pradesh. And we're in Bhopal, the city of lakes. There are seven lakes here and it's absolutely gorgeous out here. I just wanted to ask uh, Dorab, who just happened yes. to be here. This is where you kind of hang around, is it? I was first here at the age of nine. My brother was born here. Oh, that was about 20, 20 years, years ago? ago? So why is this state very important, even for 2019? One, this is a BJP bastion, Madhya Pradesh. As we shall see, it has solidly won this state for many, many years. This time, in fact, it's trying for the fourth re-election. It's won three elections in a row. Fourth time is bloody tough. But the most important thing is whoever wins this state, assembly goes on to win the state's majority of seats, a bigger majority of seats in the Lok Sabha election of Madhya Pradesh. So you do well here. A few months later, you're in a honeymoon period and you do extremely well in the Lok Sabha election. So this state is critical to the BJP also winning in the Lok Sabha. It's got to win here now in the assembly to win in the Lok Sabha and do well. This is what the foundation is. Last time the BJP won here quite easily. Very unlike Chhattisgarh, if you remember, there was just a 1% margin. Here there was a 9% margin between the BJP and the Congress. And the BSP got only 6%. 9% is a lot. So what does the Congress have to do to get a majority here? To overcome that 9%, it actually has to go all the way to a 5% swing. 5% is a lot. At 5%, it gets 117. Remember, 116 is a halfway mark. And uh, to get 5% is not an easy task. On the other hand, if the BJP gets 5%, oh, it goes through the roof and the Congress is completely wiped out. Uh, it would get 204 seats. But what about the BSP, the third sort of unknown factor in this? For the BSP, it's kind of been stuck in a bit of a band of between 6 and 9%. It really is uh, not able to break through that. And we'll see whether this could have been its big opportunity. So one would be to get a swing of 5%, as we said. The other is the Congress could have allied with the BSP. What would have happened? Remember in the last election, the Congress got 58 seats and the BSP only four seats, together 62. If they had allied with just that 6% of BSP vote added to the Congress in various seats, instead of 62, they would have gone up to 103. Just the alliance would have got them 41 more seats. Uh, votes are additive and when votes get converted into seats, it's a huge exaggeration, which I think the Congress and the BSP lost a major opportunity there. And where would they have gained these seats? Well, look at this map. Really in the northern part that borders on UP, and that's the belt also, which is scheduled caste. But you may be wondering in the background, what's that shrieking going on? Some of it was Dorab, one or two uh, uh, Shekhar, but the bulk of it, if you just have a look at them, uh, these lovely birds sitting on the left and right. And this is how Dorab forecasts. You remember the octopus who forecast? He checks medals? with the ducks. He just checks with the ducks. Now let's have a quick look at the ducks. How many ducks Dorab on the left and how many ducks on the right? Whichever is more and there are some in the middle. Oh. And I have seen some uh, of them swim from this side to that. And, and in the middle are the BSP. In the middle are the BSP. <laughs> That's good way they go. It's just a swing. You know? right. Some swing to one side or the other. And this is how he makes up his mind about who's winning. So, correct. As you know, Shivraj Singh Chavan is the first chief minister of, of MP. MP. Yeah. No chief minister. They have done, may have done 15 years over the years, but right. on the trot, he's the first one. He's already established a record. You know, there must be a certain amount of anti-income which he scans. Right. At the right. same time, his strength is that there is not that much personal antipathy about him. Yes. As builds up against an incumbent over a period of time. Because he's also a soft-spoken person who looks after his friends and also is not vindictive with his enemies. But you know, unlike Raman Singh, who has no clear opposition, 
there are opposition heavyweights in Madhya Pradesh, right. which is quite distinct from Chhattisgarh, but there's no real heavyweight in the opposition. I agree with you. He's very soft-spoken. He's not flamboyant. And I think we've said this before. We've seen many chief ministers coming to power and being re-elected when they are not flamboyant. Uh, Raman Singh is not flamboyant. Sheila Dixit wasn't flamboyant. So really, I think uh, the voter now doesn't look for oratory and flamboyance. They look for doers. Do you think that these two chief ministers have come out of nowhere? You know they were both union state ministers, union yes, ministers yes. of state. Right. Uh, Shivra Singh Chavan is a four-time MP. I mean, we hadn't even heard of him. They were all parachuted into this new state. They won the election and have held the state for 15 years. Well, from the BJP, of course, he is the central figure, the most important figure. And we see that in many ways. So the first thing we did was catch up with him on his campaign trail. He's a good speaker. But we, we got him after a rally and we asked him a few fairly tough questions. Let's see what he says. Very rare. Many congratulations. Thank you, sir. As one, uh, to start with, one big happiness that you have of these 15 years and one big regret. The most important thing is that I have been working for the government for my people. And the people of the government, as many of us have made it, they have made it in the panchayat, and they have made it in the same way. They have made it with the people of the government. They have made it with the mother and the panchayat. लाली लक्ष्मी जैसी योजना उसमें से निकली जिसके कारण मुझे बहुत प्रसन्नता है मुझे बहुत आनंद है लेकिन केवल लाली लक्ष्मी नहीं हमने सिंचाई की जो व्यवस्था की साढ़े सात लाख हेक्टर से बढ़ा के लगभग इकतालीस लाख हेक्टर में हमने संबल जैसी योजना गरीबों के लिए बनाई तो ये सब ऐसी योजनाएं जिनने गरीबों की जिंदगी बदली है मुझे अभी दो मोर्चों को और बेहतर काम करना है एक रोजगार के अवसर मुझे सृजित करना है उसके अभी और ज्यादा आवश्यकता है दूसरे कांग्रेस ने शिक्षा की व्यवस्था बिल्कुल चौपट कर दी थी शिक्षक खत्म करके शिक्षा कर्मी गुरु जी बनाए थे मैंने फिर से शिक्षक बनाए लेकिन अभी इस व्यवस्था को और दुरुस्त कर पंद्रह साल के बाद स्टिल स्टेट इन इंडिया हाउ इज दैट देखिए मध्य प्रदेश में पीपल आप अगर हर पैरामीटर पर देखेंगे मध्य प्रदेश की ग्रोथ रेट लगभग टेन के आसपास रही है एग्रीकल्चर ग्रोथ रेट लेकिन लो बेस था ना हाँ लेकिन लेकिन उसके बाद लगा था टेन परसेंट की ग्रोथ रेट हासिल करना आज साल अपने आप में बड़ी बात है एग्रीकल्चर ग्रोथ रेट ट्वेंटी के आसपास लगातार पांच साल मेंटेन करना क्योंकि तो यूपीए की सरकार ने भी हमें कृषि कर्मण अवार्ड मध्य प्रदेश को दिया ये अपने आप में चमत्कार है पर कैपिटल इनकम जो केवल तेरह हजार रूपए थी देखिए हम जहाँ थे वो बहुत पीछे थे भाषा में यहाँ तक आए मैं पर कैपिटल इनकम की बात कर रहा हूँ तो 79,000 नाइन थाउजेंड हो गई है तो कम है लेकिन हमने कम से कम पांच गुना ज्यादा बढ़ाई है और इसलिए दूसरी बात यह कि गरीबों की जिंदगी बेहतर बनाने के लिए हमने संसाधनों को ठीक ढंग से बांटा है विकास का विकास गरीब तक पहुंचाया है और फिर उनको अनेकों तरह की सुविधाएं देके उनकी जिंदगी में बदलाव और परिवर्तन हम लाए एक और प्रॉब्लम स्पेशली फॉर वुमेन आपने आपका स्पीच में यू गिव स्पोक लॉट टू अबाउट वुमेन बट इज द सेकंड वर्स्ट क्राइम इन दिस कंट्री इन मध्य प्रदेश क्राइम अगर कम करना हो तो एक सबसे आसान तरीका है आप एफ आई आर ही दर्ज ना करो हमारे सख्त निर्देश है हर एफ आई आर दर्ज होगी लाइन ऑर्डर की दृष्टि से अगर आप देखें तो मध्य प्रदेश में कभी डकैतों का आतंक था सारे डाकू खत्म हो गए सिमी के नेटवर्क को ध्वस्त किया और नक्सलवाद कम से कम मध्य प्रदेश की धरती तक नहीं आ पाया हमने जो महिलाओं के प्रति अपराध होते हैं उनसे निपटने के लिए एक सख्त कानून भी यहाँ बनाया कि मासूम बिटिया के साथ अगर कोई इस तरह की हरकत होगी तो सीधे फांसी की और चौदह से ज्यादा लोगों को फांसी की सजा सुनाई जा चुकी So one thing I know about you, known you for many years now. I'm an old man. When you get to my age, you'll understand. So, but uh, you are a man who is inclusive of all communities. There's no hatred. 
भोपाल में है ना सर वन तो कांग्रेस ने भी कौन से ज्यादा किए देखिए एक बात तो मैं ये कहूँ हम लोग जो टिकट देते हैं वो केवल हिंदू और मुसलमान के आधार पर नहीं देते जहाँ बेहतर कार्यकर्ता मिलता है उसको हम टिकट देते हैं और भोपाल नॉर्थ से हमने फातिमा बेटी को टिकट दिया है सबका साथ सबका विकास सबको साथ लेके आगे बढ़ना है और इसलिए मध्य प्रदेश में जितनी योजना बनाई हमने सबके लिए बनाई नहीं नहीं मतलब क्राइम अगेंस्ट शेड्यूल कास्ट जांच करने पड़े ये पहले नहीं उस पर तो सीधा सिद्धांत है सुप्रीम कोर्ट और लिसन टू ऑर्डर लेकिन उसमें साफ लिखा हुआ है कि यदि आवश्यक हो तो और आवश्यक हो ये कैसे पता चलेगा ये जांच से पता चलेगा आई बीन ट्रेवलिंग लेकिन मैं पता नहीं आपने कहा देखा फार्मर्स अनहैप्पी नहीं है उनकी समस्याओं का बेहतर समाधान करने का हमने प्रयास किया लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑन ग्लो ऑन इन ऑल इंडिया इशू शुड दी अयोध्या मंदिर बी बिल्ट इवन इफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज नॉट गिवन अ वर्ड इट शुड इट बी बिल्ट बिफोर द 2019 भारतीय जनता पार्टी की जो नीति है वो मेरी है लास्ट क्वेश्चन सर डू यू बिलीव इन द कास्ट सिस्टम और नॉट कास्ट सिस्टम होनी चाहिए कि नहीं सब समाज को लिए साथ में आगे बढ़ते जाना कास्ट कास्ट कास नहीं होनी चाहिए देखिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी हमेशा जाति पंथ संप्रदाय सबके ऊपर सबके ऊपर सबके बराबर मान का सिस्टम नहीं होने चाहिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी का बिलीव है भारत का भी बिलीव है आप आप भारत में आप तो, का हाट में भारत ने हमेशा ये कहा है एक एक ही चेतना समस्त जन एवं चेतन में आने तो इसलिए हम क्या सिया राम में सब जग जाने सब बराबर है कोई भेदभाव नहीं होना चाहिए Well, that was Shivraj Chauhan. Now he was very clear that I mean his main message, and he, he's improved his oratory a lot, is that nobody's angry with me. The only people who are angry with me are the Congress, and they're angry with me because I'm doing well. That was his main message. And I'm message. keeping them out of power. And I'm keeping them out of power. They're angry because they can't make money. The usual um, attack on the Congress. But he put it quite well, and he put himself as a kind of father or uncle figure, the mama. Uh, you know, and and people tend to be accepting of that. They're not high negatives. Let's just talk to a few. We did talk to a few voters in uh, different parts of the state. Let's see what they had to say. Is gaon yes. mein kisi ko mila hai? Ha, is gaon mein to mila hai. Mere ko na gas cylinder mila. Mere ko awas mila hai sir. Ha, ye ye mila hai. Ye mila hai. We were asking that people are giving who votes this year. लोग जो घर बनवाओ थे हमारे वो खेद थे अच्छा वो कौन है ए? कौन सा पार्टी अब वो जनता ही हुई और कौन पार्टी हुई भारतीय जनता पार्टी हाँ ये मुद्दा क्या है इस इस बार कुछ नहीं है ये जो मुद्दा ऐसा है कि जैसे भाजपा ने हमारे लिए गांव वाव के लिए जो मकान अकान बनवाए हैं जी हाँ तो उसकी वजह से यहाँ के लोग ये सोच रहे हैं कि फिर से विधायक हो जाए अच्छा हाँ जी हाँ और किसी पर आपको घर मिला पक्का घर नहीं अभी तो नहीं हमें तो नहीं मिला लेकिन विश्वास है होगा मिल जाएगा यहाँ किसी को गांव में ये पैसे मिले घर बनाने नहीं वो तो मुख्यमंत्री वाला वो तो है मिला मिला है बहुत से लोगों को मिला है ऐसा नहीं और गैस सिलेंडर है हाँ गैस सिलेंडर गैस सिलेंडर भी है बहुत सारी सुविधाएं हैं ऐसा नहीं है सुविधाएं तो बहुत नब्बे मकान सुविधाएं बहुत हैं घर जो बना रहे हैं वो काफी सक्सेसफुल योजना है ना पैसा आ रहा कुछ अपनी मिला के पैसे अच्छे मकान बनवा रहे हैं सब जी हाँ किसानों में आगे इस चुनाव में कौन सा पार्टी आगे चल रहा है किसानों में हमारे तो कांग्रेस में थे वो किसान की हैसियत से किसान की हैसियत से कहा अपने विधायक ये हैं उनके पास जात करते तो तुम्हारी शकल देख लाई हमारा दिन खराब होगा वो भी समस्या लेके जाते हैं तो
So from those voices, you can hear one of the big successes of the Shivrat Chauhan government has been enabling people to build pakka houses. That everybody, even those who haven't got it yet, says, look, our turn will come. Because they see a real thing on the ground. So this Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, at least in Madhya Pradesh, seems to have worked. Right. And you know, it did show up in the village. Because it's a very poor it. state. Yes, it's a poor state, but you could see people had better houses than you see in many other places. Actual pakka houses, it's a bit almost as popular as the cylinders, free gas cylinders that we that, saw in UP. That we saw in but UP. you know, the other thing is, uh, Pranay, the change now is that when voters see something tangible delivered to them, yeah. they acknowledge. Yes. And they acknowledge also in their voting response. Right. So then they don't just go by identity or by extraneous issues. Right. So voters to that extent have become so they a, lot, has done something a lot more and honest we will support in their response. Yes, but this is also a very strong agricultural state. The output has grown faster than almost any other major state. The right. fastest but the growth. Yeah. But the problem is that the MSP is not enough. So the question is more I produce. I don't get, you know, right. the actual MSP so effect is not working. There's some farm unhappy, distress. Yeah. Listen to what the people in the villages had to say. Yeah, the money doesn't get the money. You don't get the money. You don't get the money. किसान परेशान है माहौल परिवर्तन का समझ में आ रहा है अच्छा अच्छा क्यों मतलब मुद्दा क्या है मुद्दा ये लोग परेशान है अच्छा अच्छा किसान परेशान है आप तो जा रहे हैं जी और यहाँ पे कितने दिन के लिए आप यहाँ हमारा यहाँ तीन महीने का सीजन रहता है पूरे मध्य प्रदेश जो लोकल किसानों से बात करते हैं वो इस इलेक्शन में किसको वोट दे रहे हैं वो ज्यादातर कांग्रेस को दे रहे हैं कांग्रेस को दे रहे हैं क्यों दे रहे हैं कांग्रेस को कांग्रेस को इसलिए दे रहे हैं कि देखो जैसे ये धान बन रही है इनकी धान कम रेट में उठ रही है और जैसे सोसाइटी में इनकी आज धान बिक गई तो उसके बाद इनकी पेमेंट दो तीन तीन महीने नहीं आती अच्छा अच्छा खातों में अब मुश्किल हो जाता है Paradox, a state with such high agricultural growth has so much farm right. stress. I mean, right. uh, you have a PhD uh, in agricultural economics, but thank you. Very much. Since but, that time, they're all having stress. But the farmers <laughs> all having stress. Know, farmers are caught in the same crop cycles, and yeah. they haven't gone up the value-added uh, yeah. route. Yeah, right. Well, let's have a look a little more detail at Madhya Pradesh. What kind of a state is it? What are the politics? behind the different regions of the states and what are the religious and caste divide. Just the foundation of this election and we'll build on that to see who's going to win this election. If you look at the overall religious divide, it's 91% Hindu and 7% Muslim and 2% Christians and others. And within the Hindus, if you look at a breakup, uh, the scheduled tribe, 20%. Scheduled caste, 15%. These are both high. That's 35% together. And other Hindu castes, and here uh, the non-scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, are 56% of the population. Uh, if you look at rural urban, again, it's a very rural state, as Dorab was just saying. 72% of Madhya Pradesh is rural, it's villages. 
So the rural vote is very important in the state. If you look at the tribal belt, there are two main tribal belts. One on the eastern border, and that has a 36% tribal population, and one on the western border, which has a 49% tribal population. Remember those two areas, that's crucial in determining the fortunes in this election. Moving on to the scheduled castes, where are they? Well, one is that entire border, as we were mentioning, in the north along, uh, with Uttar Pradesh. That border... Like in the Bundelkhand area. Yes, in like that Bundelkhand, area. Bundelkhand, Chambal, Vindhya Pradesh, the entire right. yeah. northern yes, part yes. of the state. And then on the western part, there's a band which is not often discussed, but it is an important scheduled caste band. So both those tribal bells and the two scheduled caste bells are very important in this election, and we shall come to that. It's, I mean, the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes vote very differently from the others. You know, the scheduled caste actually is not one scheduled caste. Right. Mayawati, for instance, has made got only 2% of the vote in the scheduled caste towards the Gujarat border. Similarly, the two scheduled tribes are different. The Bills, which are near Gujarat, right. and Gonds. Uh, one Very type, they are mainly BJP, Those the Gonds are more for the Congress. So, you right. know, I mean, this broad term, scheduled caste, scheduled tribes. As Dorab says, there's the Gonds, there's the Bills, there are different castes, there are the Brahmins, there uh, I mean, it is such a heterogeneous society. And people think they all vote one way or the other way. It's never that. It's maybe 60, 40, 70, 30. When it's 70-30, that is a huge mandate from one particular community. But we get the impression all of them are voting one. I know, but you know, as you keep saying, in first past the post system, it's a couple of percent that makes a difference. In right. Chhattisgarh, the difference was only 0.7 percent the last time. Right. So that's how it works, and that's where uh, in these groups, where, where there is a there is an obvious gap, say 40, 60, even 45, 55, can become a decisive gap. Right. Uh, but we are seeing here, gaps are much larger for yeah. SCs as well, as well as STs. Yes, let's actually go into the actual voting percentages among these diff different communities. Let's have a look first at the tribal belt. Uh, there are two types of, major two types of tribe, the Gons and the Bheels. And the Gons, the BJP is well behind. It only gets 37% compared to the Congress's 60%. That is a huge difference. So the Gons are for the Congress. And what about the Beals? It's almost the opposite. 58% of Beals vote for the BJP and 34% for the Congress. That's a huge difference. So as Dorab said, it's not that all your scheduled tribes are a homogeneous lot. They, they are very different. They have very different desires, very different demands. So, sir, and they vote for different parties. Surprisingly, if you look at the Gujarati Bills and the MP Bills, they vote the same way. So their right. bills more than scheduled but yes, tribe. Right. But also, but similarly, the Gons going to Chhattisgarh right. both similarly. But also because I think uh, Gujarat is a very strong BJP state as well. Yeah, and this on the border. And they're on the border. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And let's have a look at what about the scheduled castes. The scheduled castes are different, vote differently from the non-scheduled caste Hindus. Just have a look at this. The non-scheduled caste scheduled tribe Hindu, uh, which we are co in this we are including the Banyas the Brahmins, the Thakurs, and the Sahus, 69%, that's nearly 70% vote for the BJP and only 22% for the Congress. And that, remember, this non-SCST uh, Hindus are 56% of the population. So the BJP sweeps that. But among the Dalit voters, scheduled caste voters, the BJP plus has 39% only of their vote and the Congress Plus, or the UPA, 48%. So it's exactly the reverse, though not quite the degree, as the Hindu non-SEST voter. And moving on from the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe, big divide in Madhya Pradesh, let's have a look at some of the other divides. Look at the age divide between the Congress and the BJP. Young voters and now we're talking about our opinion poll in 2014, which was extremely accurate for Madhya Pradesh. This state is probably the most honest people because they give you, truly give you who they're going to vote for. The age divide among young voters, that's 18 to 22 years, the BJP had a 26% lead over the Congress. But among middle-aged voters, 
of 30 to 40 years old like uh, Shekhar, the BJP had only a 7% lead. So look at the difference how the young really voted for the BJP in 2014. If I can interrupt you, uh, between then and now, a lot more voters in the 18 to 22 age group have come. Exactly. Ha have yeah. become voters. Right. So BJP now, uh, even now you can see, has a very strong advantage among the very young voters who haven't yes. seen politics very much before. Right. And who have no nostalgia for Congress. Right. And this seems to be uniform across, across different country, states yes. as well. Of course, it was at its peak in 2014. It won't be at that level we now. We saw it in Karnataka as well this time. Yes. yes. Young yes. people. More yes, more. quite right, quite right. Now, moving on from the age divide, look at the men-women divide. Now, there it's a bit different. The BJP does much better among men than amongst women. The BJP amongst men, 2% above its average vote in the state. But amongst women, 2% below its average vote. That 4% difference is huge in an election. The Congress, exactly the other way around. Men, 2% below its average and women, 2% above its average. So Congress strong amongst women and BJP strong amongst men. It's always been the case. BJP has always been, been strong amongst the yes. men. It's a party of men. There are hardly any women leaders. Right. So that's only now that they're emerging. Right, right. If you look at the trend in the scheduled caste vote, that is some good news for the Congress. It has been going up in over the last 10 years. The Congress support amongst the scheduled caste have gone up by 6%. But in 10 years, that's very slow. The BJP has gone up by 1% among scheduled castes and the BSP by just 1%. That's over 10 years. Now that is a significant difference between the Congress and the others. And where has this come from? All from smaller parties and independents, which are getting more and more marginalized in our elections. Independents are falling away as voters, mature voters, begun to realize that is a bit of a wasted vote, not voting for the main parties and voting for independents. So this 6%, I mean, so far, that's the only mm. kind of positive that the uh, Congress can look at. Yes, I think, but, you know, in a state where they do constitute a fairly large proportion of the population and where the BJP Congress has not been doing well in 2013, it's a good thing that you're on the uptick because many of these are very tight Fights. Well, you know, the whole thing is a tight fight. So if you can get two or three percent more, you want to a good thing. Well, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh are very different states and very important for one particular reason. These are two large states which are BJP versus Congress direct contest, but have a very small Muslim vote. So the idea that Congress or anti-BJP forces start with an advantage of 15 percent, 18 percent, that doesn't exist here. Right. So this is much more of a straight competition for the Hindu vote. So one of the things that uh, Kamal Nath, who everybody says if the Congress does win, will be the next Chief Minister. Of course, they have so many aspirants, you never know who's actually going to win, uh, become Chief Minister. One of the things that Kamal Nath will be looking at is the scheduled caste vote, where the Congress has been doing, as we see, slightly better. The problem is that BSP and the Congress are fighting for the same base in the scheduled caste and that's a big issue. So we spoke to Kamal Nath and we raised why didn't, uh, questions about why didn't he go with Mayavati and what are his strategies. This is what he had to say. Kamal Nath, congratulations on leading the Congress party in this election. But I just want to ask you, 15 years, Congress has lost three elections. That's a very sad record over 15 years. What went wrong? Well, we were organizationally, the first election that we lost in 2003 was because of incumbent for 10 years, which we had. Then in 2008, was our organization wasn't what it should be. Been. One of my biggest challenges was that we built up this organization, which had got uh, more fat than muscle right. and that's been what my effort has been in the last six months. Right, right. So now we have a very vibrant Congress organization right. at the village level. But I've also heard and uh, that there's a lot of infighting and that there are so many top leaders 
your leader heavy in this state. I mean, it's an embarrassment of riches. No, it's not. Is there infighting? I, I, I don't think there's any infighting amongst the leaders. We have perf perfect harmony and coordination among ourselves. Right. Everybody is on the is on the field. Everybody is making an effort because the objective is the same. Right. Everybody's stakes are the same. Right. Right. I mean, we must recognize that. Yeah, that's so, important. Uh, okay. That being so, there's perfect harmony. Now there is obviously it's natural. It happens in a family that somebody is more close to the other. The right. mother is more close to the son or the daughter or the father is more close. So that happens in every party and so it happens in our party. Right. Now you've worked for years in Chindwara and you've been repeatedly winning there. It's, it's a remarkable record. What have you learned from that that can help the Congress in the entire state? That at the end of the day, people must trust you and the trust must be converted to a faith. And that can only happen if they say things happening. People hope if they see things happening. But if they feel that they've been assured, everybody wants everything. But if they get a little bit of something, they're happy and then they can hope more. Okay. Interesting. At least some delivery must be I wish you visit Chinbara. Right. One day. One day. Uh, and see, I do wish. I've heard a lot about it. Uh, yes. You visit Chinbara right. and you see what's right. happening there. So I, I, just tell us the full inside story of why you couldn't tie up with Mayavati. Because our analysis shows that if you had, you would have got 40, 50 seats more, straight. Now, uh, what happened, step by step? To start off with, let me tell you, that's a very theoretical calculation. Because if you just look at numbers... Don't go into my calculation. Okay, I agree, no, my uh, calculations are generally wrong. Okay. But what happened in the negotiations well, the and the discussions? The number of seats they wanted and the type of seats that they wanted didn't come to a winning combination. They were type of seats, that's... The type, that means the, the seats they wanted didn't add up to numbers of the pa past record of elections. Right. And in fact, it meant gifting the seats, seats to the BJP. So that's why it never happened. Give me some uh, an example of what kind of seat that you mean that would have been uh, not right to give. They wanted a seat in Chidbara. They wanted a seat in Indore where they've got a thousand votes. And they have no votes there. So those are the kind of seats which they said they wanted. Obviously, right. why they wanted it, I don't know. It better explain right. in other ways. But was it an acrimonious discussion? No, it was pleasant until finally they said that uh, we, don't, we don't think it works out. I said, yeah, I don't think it works out. But you were willing to give them 45, 55, but we not said, just the kind of seats. We were willing to give them our 25. We said, we'll give you 30, provided we can defeat the BJP. Not just start from the top and say, these numbers we give you. I you said, want to know which seats? Which seats? We've got to go seat by seat if we want to defeat the BJP. Okay. So it was basically the kind of seat rather than the number of seats, is that right? It was the kind of seats and the numbers. It was the kind uh, led to numbers also. Right. One of the issues here is that the huge Vyapan scam. Now, uh, our correspondent here says, you've asked it to go to the CBI. But that's like playing into the hands of the BJP because they control the CBI. That's what the people say. Is that correct? That of course. Was that a mistake? Of course. But Vyapam is not there. Let's remember this. Every youth has been cheated. And 2,000 people went to jail who gave money. They did the wrong thing. They sold their jewelry, they mortgaged their land. They went to jail. Their lives are finished. But those who took the money are the leaders and the natives. So corruption is not an issue because corruption both sides are seen as corrupt? Because Congress has that problem, the image of corruption. I don't see the, the, this is the corruption capital of India. The corruption starts from the village and goes all the way. You have the mafia, the sand mafia, the liquor mafia, the satta mafia, the coal mafia, all controlled by BJP leaders. Public are saying it. Finally, one question. Who is the vote getter in Madhya Pradesh? Modi or Shivraj Chauhan? Rahul Gandhi or Kamal Nath? Who are the real vote getters? I think the vote getters, the people are. Uh, this electorate is very different. Well, politics 10 years ago was very different, where a leader could tell them. Mm. Now, today, a leader cannot go to 20 villages, a local man, and say, You vote for them. Mm. They decide in their village. Correct. The electorate has changed. Right. That's and true. we must recognize how much the electorate has changed. If you tell any of these people that. You know, the RSS goes and tells them you vote for that. Anyone on the street, they will no, say, we, we know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Especially smart. the women, they make up their own mind yeah, also. Absolutely, women make up their own mind. So who's a bigger vote getter here in Madhya Pradesh from the people point of view? Modi or Shivra Chauhan, between the two of them? I don't think, well, both of them can attract crowds. Those are managed crowds, you know. But who's a bigger kind of 
got the people's and sentiment. The moment being a Vidhan Sabha election and with the severe incumbency of uh, the Chief Minister right. Shivraj Singh, Modi would be a better. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. So, so that was Kamal Nath, probably the favorite to be the next chief minister, but he's got a, there are a lot of aspirants, at least four, who want to be chief minister if the Congress wins. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look a little at what are the signs about who's ahead and who's trailing in this election. See you then. Welcome back. Well, one of the factors that people tend to underestimate about the politics of Madhya Pradesh is how dominant the BJP has been here for nearly 30 years. Just have a look at this graph. You can see that the Congress did win twice in between in the last 30 years, but they won very narrowly. But every time the BJP won, it won with huge majorities. And it's won most of the time. And if you look at the average BJP uh, number percentage of seats over the last 28 years 28 years the BJP has won 65 percent of the seats in Madhya Pradesh and the Congress only 35 so Dora that kind of dominance it's it's pretty it's in the ground we found it when we talk to people they say you know I'm always been BJP I'll continue to vote BJP that's tough for the Congress to break <coughs> not only is it dominance is dominance of a disciplined party. So right. You know, there aren't five guys fighting for the chair. Right. That makes life simpler and I right. think difficult well, to displace. I mean, it's evident that this is even more a BGP state than Gujarat. Uh, they've had infighting uh, among, for the top job among their leaders, but otherwise it's strong cadre, it's spread all over. So this is a classical BJP state. But one of the things that they, that will worry them is the fact that they've been in power for three consecutive terms. It's very difficult, not just in India. You can see some of Ruchir's work. Anywhere in the world, coming in for a fourth time is very tough. And we did talk to uh, quite a few farmers and people out in the villages to find out, is there a change? Are they voting for this, the same way? And you can't come to a conclusion, but just listen and make up your mind. Here are some voices from the fields of Madhya Pradesh. Change <laughs> तो इस बार मैं पिछले बार किसको वोट दिया था पिछले बार पिछले बार मोदी सरकार को दिया था और इस बार इस बार तो कांग्रेस को देंगे अच्छा पिछले बार आप किसको दिया था पिछले बार हमने मोदी जी को दिया था और विधानसभा विधानसभा भी हमने बीजेपी को समर्थन किया था इस बार इस बार तो कांग्रेस है और पूरा का पूरा कांग्रेस है अभी वोट देंगे ना इस हां वोट तो देंगे को किसको देंगे आप वोट तो एंटी जाएगी ना हमारा हम भारतीय जनता पार्टी के कार्यकर्ता भी हैं यहां के सांसद का सांसद प्रतिनिधि रहा मैं लेकिन मैं इस बात से बीजेपी से नाराज हूं कि उन्होंने प्रत्याशी का चयन ठीक नहीं किया 15 15 साल हो गए हमारे विधायक को बीजेपी के राम प्यारे जी को उन्होंने विकास के नाम में कोई भी काम नहीं किया तो इस बार आप चेंज करेंगे चेंज कर, करना ही चाहिए प्रजातंत्र में यदि 5 साल में एक बार आपको मौका मिलता है तो ये पट्टा नहीं होना चाहिए आपको चेंज करते रहना चाहिए और यदि आपका जनप्रतिनिधि निकम्मा है कोई काम नहीं कर सकता तो उसको तो टिकट नहीं मिलना चाहिए टिकट मिल गई तो उसको फिर वोट नहीं मिलना चाहिए आपने पिछले बार किसको दिया था पिछले बार इस बार नहीं पिछले बार आप 
स्कूल को दिया था अच्छा अच्छा और इस बार अब बल चक्कर है साहब यहाँ आया है पता नहीं इतने आन कहाँ कहाँ गाँव का ओके ओके मुद्दा क्या है लोग को बदलाव क्यों चाहिए बदलाव अब चेंज हो जाता तो ठीक रहा है अच्छा तो जैसे कहाँ अब से आन भाई अब अच्छा चेंज चाहिए सब लोग जानते हैं कि कट्टर भाजपा ही हूँ आंखें खोली भाजपा में खोली है अच्छा। मेरे मामा जी कांग्रेस लेकिन मैं भाजपा ही हूँ अच्छा। उसके बाद में भाजपा को वोट नहीं दूंगा अच्छा इतना कचरा विधायक है मैंने यहाँ जैसा इतना कचरा विधायक मैं कम से कम पचास बार में भाजपा उसके पास गया था काम अच्छा, करा अच्छा। पिछले बार काम बीजेपी को दिया जी बिल्कुल पिछली बार नहीं लेकिन इस बार तो चेंज चेंज अच्छा ये नहीं बताऊँ किस को दूंगा लेकिन दूंगा दूसरे को और मैं नहीं मैं अपने साथ जितने भी मेरे भाई है दोस्त है सब चेंज चेंज बिल्कुल so it's clear that while the bjp is dominant in the state this fourth term has caused a bit of anti incumbency a bit of uh, let's look for a change and especially there are among the farming community the farmers are not happy yeah because you produce more but the msp is not enough it's a it's a no win situation for the people who farm rice and wheat in this country right. and a lot of them said we are not getting it on time we are meant to get it in 3 4 days it takes 2 months to get our money and and they were unhappy the farming Because community they they've seen growth but they are producing low value products produce and also they are not linked to the markets so when the government comes in it takes you time getting money from the government and there is you know there are intermediaries and uh, and and and, and there, there is arbitrage so i think uh, farmers really suffer and growth itself looks very good but doesn't particularly make them richer because they expect their lives to be a lot better than another 10% of wheat i don't forget it. the 11% growth which is very high that yes, yes. madhya pradesh has had has been from a very low base yes. so yes. you know they've seen their neighbors the neighboring uh, states farmers doing better but also from subsistence farming they've come to this so i think the rewarded uh, the government the last time but now for 5 years if you see more growth then you think my life should have got a lot better than it has so the positives for the bjp is that this uh, dominant they're dominant here they have a huge base they're a disciplined party they have a cadre that can get their voters out the, uh, they also the the giving the pakka houses that scheme has been a great success but the negatives are that there is disaffection the people want to change they want to try something new four times is difficult so what do the opinion polls say and we always look at the poll of polls not any individual one and this is what the poll of polls says it says that the bjp is going to get 116 that is exactly the halfway very mark very narrow very narrow kaante ki takkar congress 102 very narrow that's a 1% difference 1 to 1.5% difference in votes so that 9% will come down to 1.5% if this these figures are correct and the bsp only 5 seats so you believe polls sometimes i think they're getting better actually the the, the strike rate of being getting the winner right is reasonably high now they may get the uh, amount Margin of seats wrong. but that's also because lately mostly the same side is winning right right so yeah so but if you look at it for the last 20 years is getting better and better but anything can happen absolutely so that's what the poll of poll says absolutely hitting the halfway mark 116 to the bjp and only 1.5% votes ahead of the congress so it's still there's still some time to go so it's very close Again, we went out in the field to try and see how many people have changed. Are they changing from Congress to BJP more, or BJP to Congress more? Let's focus on those kind of people and why they're changing, not the ones that have said, "I'm I've always voted Congress. I'll continue to vote." What are the causes for the swing? Listen to what the people in the villages had to say. Sir, you, 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 जो पॉइंट चल रहे हैं जो उसी में साथ में हम लोग कौन कौन सा है अभी तो जनता पार्टी में कुछ लेकिन ये चल रही है ना उसी के साथ में नहीं रहे हैं बीजेपी अच्छा और पिछले बार कांग्रेस पिछले बार कांग्रेस और इस बार बीजेपी अच्छा अच्छा आप किसको वोट देंगे हम नहीं बताने चाहते 
नहीं बिल्कुल ठीक कोई बात नहीं पिछले बार किसको दिया था कांग्रेस को अच्छा और इस बार जनता पार्टी को बदल रहे हैं काम ऐसा व्यक्ति की जरूरत है और अपन को ये लग रहा है की जो विधायक थे वो बाकायदे जनता में काम करते हैं ऐसा हमको लग रहा है आप पिछले आप कांग्रेस पिछले बार बीजेपी को था पिछले बार बीजेपी इस बार कांग्रेस क्यों चेंज क्यों किया इसलिए कि पंद्रह साल में कोई विकास भी नहीं हुआ कोई विकास भी नहीं हुआ नहीं यहाँ पे कोई या नहीं सुनने वाला है विधायक सांसद कोई भी नहीं सुन रहा इसलिए बदलाव चाहिए भाई हमारे इधर पे तीन पंचवर्षीय से है विधायक राम प्यारी कुलस्ती जी तो उनने कुछ विकास करवाया नहीं कुछ किया नहीं तो अब भाई सत्ता तो सभी कर रहे हैं सब आना है सत्ता में किसी न किसी को एक बार बदलाव करके देखें आप पिछले बार किसको दिया था बीजेपी को दिए आपको भी दिया आपने बीजेपी को और इस बार वही देंगे कि नहीं बदलाव तो आएगा बदलाव आएगा देखो सबको मौका देना चाहिए है ना तो थोड़ा बहुत बदलाव भी जरूरी है मैं स्टेट लेवल की बात कर रहा हूँ स्टेट लेवल कोई अपने यानी कि लोकल ब्लॉक की बात नहीं कर समझ लिया समझ गया स्टेट लेवल की बात कर रहा हूँ स्टेट लेवल में यह है कि सभी को मौका मिलना चाहिए और सभी की जो है सरकार देखनी चाहिए कौन क्या हमारे जनताओं के लिए कर रहा है अच्छा 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 तो स्टेट में बदलाव चाहिए यहाँ पे इसके बारे इस इलाके के बारे में आप नहीं कह रहे अगर सर जी हाँ थोड़ी इलाके में भी चाहिए अच्छा। और दूसरा अगर सबसे मेन पॉइंट कोई बात है तो अपना पूरा मध्य प्रदेश में थोड़ा सा बदलाव चाहिए जो युवा वर्ग है युवा वर्ग जो आज बेरोजगार हैं उनके तहत बात कर रहा हूँ कि अगर बदलाव हो तो उनको शायद कुछ नए रोजगार मिल सके सुधीर सिंह that there is a swing vote happening there are quite a few people switching from the congress to the bjp and even more perhaps from the bjp to the congress but is it enough for the congress well the two other bits of information non opinion polls if you don't be, believe in opinion polls have a look at these two things what are the by election results been like and what about the municipal elections what have they been like now let's look at the by election results very good news for the bjp BJP has gone up in the two by elections vote has gone up by 13% and 12% while the Congress only up 2% and actually down 2% in one they might have held on to those seats but the swing was clearly in favor of the BJP these by elections were held more than 6 months ago and normally by elections are an indicator that they held within 3 to 6 months so a little too long ago to say they are good indicators but whatever there were by elections and the bjp did very well and they'll be happy with that from the congress point of view the positive is the municipal elections they did very well just have a look at this in fact there's a swing against the bjp of minus 3% and a swing in favor of the congress of 5% and if you project those it really suggests that it's neck and neck this time so that is good news the municipal election results good news for the congress <coughs> by election results good news for the bjp both these were held not in the last 6 months so they are not reliable indicators things in the last 6 months are all our studies show you'll be reading that in our book but these were held longer but some indicator yes of course all these are certainly the by elections and local elections they're very close by a good indicator no and also uh, shaker that these are actual elections on the ground it's not an opinion poll where people can tell a lie or there's a fear factor or they say i won't answer these are actual people have gone out and voted and if 11% more voted for the bjp very positive and if the congress did much better in municipal that's also good well I, uh, usually what, what what is the excuse that people come up with if you're an incumbent and you lose you say oh these are just by elections there are no reflection of the mood right uh, and if you're a challenger and you lose badly then you say oh because it's a government 
they must have spent a lot of money. But the fact is that after 14 years, 14 and a half years of being in power, if you still get a 13% increase in your vote share, that means they're doing quite well and six months is not that far back. Municipal elections, uh, you will know better how, uh, is that, how, how heavily weighted is that towards the urban side. Right, there is a change. Uh, we did see a lot of voters saying they are going to change. But so the positives for the BJP, the polls are in its favor, the by-elections were in its favor. The positives for the Congress is they're doing better with the scheduled cast and they did very well in the municipal elections. That's the balance right now. So these are the bellwether constituencies to look out for. A bellwether constituency is one where whichever party wins in the bellwether seat also wins in the state, becomes the state government. So if the BJP wins bellwether, it constituency, it also wins in the state. Similarly with the Congress. And all of these are listed on our website, ndtv.com, if you want to look at them in some detail. So do have a look at these bellwether seats. We did go through them whether they really are indicators of poor, pure coincidence. And subsequently I went back and checked. The earlier bellwethers we have, have actually turned out to be so pretty good. So what is the reason? Is it just a coincidence? Or is it something special about the mix of voters that make bellwether constituencies bellwether? Do you have a few hours? I'll just, I can answer that. In no, and don't say read in our book. <laughs> and read it in our book. <laughs> so we went to one of the major bellwether constituencies, Nivas. And we talked to lots of people there. Listen to what the people of Nivas, a bellwether constituency, nine times, 37 years right, what they had to say. यहाँ पे हाथ उठाइए कौन बीजेपी को दे रहे हैं एक दो तीन चार पांच छः और कौन कांग्रेस को कौन दे रहे हैं हाथ उठाइए कांग्रेस को कांग्रेस अरे कांग्रेस को क्यों कौन दे रहे हैं दो लोकसभा में मोदी जी को बोल दिया था और सिवाज जी का भी अच्छा चल रहा था मामले जी योजनाएं थी जैसा आपसे लेकिन अभी कुछ हम अगर properly यहाँ की बात करें जी हाँ यहाँ की इस मंडला जिला लोकसभा की बात करें और विधानसभा की बात विधानसभा विधानसभा की बात करें तो विधानसभा में हमारा इनका गढ़ पंद्रह साल से है लेकिन आज भी निवास उन्नीस सौ चौदह की तहसील है इस तहसील जो है उन्नीस सौ चौदह की तहसील लेकिन इसका तहसील तो छोड़ो इस तहसील को भी सब उठा दिया गया यहाँ से दूर कर दिया गया और यहाँ से नर्मदा जो नदी है यहाँ से दस किलोमीटर की दूरी में है घिरी हुई है नर्मदा जी इसके बाद भी आज हम यहाँ पानी के लिए तरस रहे हैं यहाँ पे हाथ उठाइए कांग्रेस को कौन दे रहे हैं एक दो तीन चार पाँच छः तो ये कांग्रेस अड्डा है क्या और बीजेपी को कौन एक दो तीन चार विकास नहीं है सर बेरोजगारी है और बिल्कुल काम ना धंधा बस हम लोग मजदूर लोग हैं सौ महंगाई भी मिलता है साल में सर सौ दिन, दिन का काम मिलता है इसके बाद हम बैठे रहते हैं कोई काम नहीं है फिर गांव छोड़ के बाहर जाएंगे काम के लिए दूसरे जिला में दूसरे प्रदेश में जाते हैं सर काम के लिए और महंगाई भी अधिक बढ़ गई है पिछले बार किसको दिया था कांग्रेस को दिया था मैंने तो पिछले बार कांग्रेस इस बार भी कांग्रेस इस बार भी कांग्रेस आप हाँ कांग्रेस को दिए थे और फिर दोबारा इस बार नहीं बदल नहीं छे नहीं आप इस बार बीजेपी को देंगे नहीं नहीं कांग्रेस को देंगे कांग्रेस को बदल नहीं है सरकार बदल नहीं पिछले बार किसको दिया था मैंने पिछले बार बीजेपी को वोट किया था और इस बार बीजेपी को वोट करूंगा अच्छा कैमरा ऑन करना जी हाँ ठीक है ना जो भी साठ सत्तर साल में कांग्रेस ने जनता के लिए जो नहीं किया वो बीजेपी ने भी किया है अच्छा आज मार मेरी बहन मेरी बेटी स्कूल जा रही है वेरी गुड अभी थोड़ा कांग्रेस का चल रहा है थोड़ा कांग्रेस का चल रहा है क्यों क्या मुद्दा क्या है सर क्या पंद्रह साल से हो गए उनको रहते हुए न कोई कहा आज तक कोई कार्य नहीं करवाया न ऐसी कोई उन्नति नहीं करवाया विकास नहीं हुआ इसलिए जी हाँ पंद्रह साल हो गए अच्छा अच्छा उनको विधायक रहते हैं जी हाँ अब सोच रहे न्याय को लेके आए माँ कुछ करे वो अच्छा जी हाँ so that's the people of Nivas, the voters of Nivas. You make up your own mind which way is Nivas going this time. One really important phenomenon which we have been discussing is the 
greater importance that assembly elections have over Lok Sabha elections. Assembly elections are now hugely important. There's much more participation. Just look at this, these simple facts. If you just look at this chart, you'll see how much elections have changed, how much more important assembly elections have become. Ele assembly elections turnout has grown from 52% when it is to trail behind the Lok Sabha turnout to 70% and Lok Sabha still remains at 54. So assembly elections, 70% of people turn out. Lok Sabha elections, only 54% turn out. Now that is a huge statement that all of us in the media, we focus on Lok Sabha, <laughs> everything's all about Lok Sabha. But for the people of this country, assembly is more important and increasingly panchayat and municipal elections have a very high turnout. In fact, if our municipal corporations really become empowered and they can start delivering and be held accountable for how we live, the quality of our lives, then I think democracy will get much stronger and they may even get larger voting percentages than assembly elections. You know, that's the trend actually. We find the municipal that's elections and uh, panchayats, the turnout is growing faster. But the tragedy is that the power is not devolving to municipal corporations. But They're I think the voters will eventually demand it. And being run by civil servants. And the more grassroots democracy there is, right. the greater the participation, the greater the involvement. Distance, you know, the municipal corporator lives in my area. Yeah. The MLA is two kilometers away. And the, the MP is in Delhi. Yeah. And, and he comes really once comes in five years. Right. So yeah. I think the distance also. So one of the important factors, the hoardings like Chhattisgarh, even here in Madhya Pradesh, <laughs> We don't see central leaders in the hoardings. We don't see Rahul Gandhi very much on the Congress hoardings. It's mainly Kamal Nath. And we don't see Mr. Modi on the BJP hoardings. It's maybe Shivraj Chauhan. So that is a big change from uh, even a year or so ago where Mr. Modi used to dominate the hoarding and the chief minister used to be small in, in one corner. Now it's the other way around. So we asked both Mr. Shivraj Chauhan and Kamal Nath, why is this happening? Is it because you're a local leader and you have greater vote-getting ability, a greater appeal than a central leader? Listen to what both of them had to say. I've noticed in your posters, Rahul is smaller than you, so you're the bigger vote-getter? Well, I don't know. You haven't got anything? I have anything to do with the posters about the local people put up. So they must think you're the better vote-getter because people don't put things without you know, no, they, I, they I, had a feel. There's no doubt that Rahul Gandhi, I was with him yesterday, the whole day yesterday, traveling in various meetings. He's undoubtedly uh, very big vote there. And whatever the urban crowd may say, right. whatever the so-called intelligentsia may say, right. you see, you can divide the people into two classes, right. the masses and the asses. <laughs> so I'm talking about the masses. But we have noticed that the posters, Modi is very small and Shivra Chauhan is oh, not existent and Shivra Chauhan's picture is there. That's why, that's what Shivra thinks and that's the oh, mistake right. he's making. Right. But today both Modi and Shivra don't fly amongst the voters. Who designs your posters, sir? I've seen all your posters. Hey, I don't know this. Because in this, then people are putting you as the main and Mr. Modi is smaller. In all the other, in all the other elections I've seen, so Modi is big, the minutes are small. So you are the leader. लेकिन नरेंद्र मोदी एक मिनट बस नरेंद्र मोदी जी भारत के लिए भगवान का वरदान हैं वो देश के करोड़ों करोड़ जनता के हृदय के सम्राट हैं भारत के मुकुट मणि हैं मेरी और देश की करोड़ों जनता के श्रद्धा के और आस्था के केंद्र हैं उनके पीछे हम चलते हैं वो आइडिया है भारत का मान सम्मान और शांति हम भी उनके पीछे हैं। but, but all your candidates want you in their poster। नहीं 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 कोई बात नहीं जिसकी सभा होगी, जिसकी सभा होगी, जाहिर है, जिसकी सभा होगी, उसका बड़ा लगेगा। मेरे अलावा कोई दूसरे लीडर की सभा होगी, तो मेरा छोटा लगता है, उसका बड़ा लगता है। तो जहाँ कोई पब्लिक मीटिंग होती है वहाँ, जिसकी मीटिंग होती है, उसका फोटो बड़ा लगा देते हैं। अब ये कंट्रोवर्सी करना मत कीजिए। No 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 कंट्रोवर्सी मेरे और किसी नेता की सभा होती है मेरा फोटो छोटा लगता है सेम थिंग इन छत्तीसगढ़ प्रदेश का बड़ा लगता है सेम थिंग इज रमन सिंह मिस्टर मोदी इज इट डजंट मैटर दीस आर हुएवर गेट्स द वोट 
So both of them, both those leaders, a little bit worried that is being pointed out to them that their prominence in all hoardings is much more than their big bosses in Delhi. That's what assembly elections are about. Local leaders are important, aren't they, Dura? Oh, very important, I think. Because I think central leaders, perhaps, you know, if you've been here 15 years, Kamal Nath's been here 40 years in this state. I mean, he started fighting in the 70s. So he is a local leader. And I think perhaps, you know, I don't know whether the central leaders are playing it safe. You know, I just don't know about that. But the local leaders are very, very strong, very, very powerful. Also local loyalty, Shivdar Singh Chauhan has won the elections here even before the Modi wave. So he's a leader in his own right. <clears throat> and Kamal Nath, particularly in his areas, is quite popular and powerful. In fact, he's among the two congressmen who were still able to win that election in 2014 in spite of such a humongous landslide swing. Right. So, so, so there is something to this. And you know, why did this a controversial? When you're being naughty, you can, okay, you, you like euphemisms, you, no, can, say, what... you can say cheeky, <laughs> but, but you don't have to say... But you heard what uh, Shivraj Chauhan said. He said, don't make a controversy out of this. But Maybe it's controversial not a controversy. for him. Yes, it's, yes, it's a straightforward it, it, journalistic it, 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 observation. Yes, and it is an interesting observation yes. of the importance of assembly elections over Lok Sabha elections, important of local leaders over central yes. leaders. This is what I would call writings on the wall. Uh, yes, we always read those. So read writings <laughs> right. on the wall. Okay, thanks very much for watching. This is just part one of our analysis of Madhya Pradesh. We've traveled quite, around, uh, quite a lot around Madhya Pradesh already. We're going to do the other half now and we'll be back in about a week from now for a final summing up of who's winning in Madhya Pradesh. Do join us then. Thanks very much for being with us. Bye-bye.